All right, uh, good morning. Uh, very good morning and uh, welcome once again. Uh, can I request uh, one of you to please uh, lead us off in prayer, please? Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the class we are about to have, God. God, I please uh, each and every one of my classmates who has gathered here into your hands uh, throughout the class. Give us the good Wi-Fi connections that we need. And God, let your Holy Spirit lead us, help us to open our mind and heart and listen to each other and accept it and do it in our life so that uh, we can glorify your name jesus we can glorify your kingdom above everything i place pastor roshan into your hands be with him and guide him throughout the session we love you and we thank you in jesus name i pray amen amen thank you jafina right uh, i guess so uh, in the previous class we discussed about systems and processes right that that's the chapter we looked at and we looked at different systems that uh, we can we draw a parallel from um, the different systems in the human body and see how we can apply and imply that uh, uh, in our churches right? that's what we covered in the previous class and now we move on to chapter 24 uh, chapter 24 on page 151 um, so we'll just be covering a couple uh, we're almost uh, coming towards the end of this course uh, we might complete a couple of chapters today and uh, um, because the remaining chapters are covered in the other courses okay but yeah we'll uh, we're in chapter 24 right now nurturing and equipping believers that's where we're at i right. uh, hope you all are there page 151 in your notes In, in everything that the local church stands for, right? Uh, from the beginning, what we've learned about how it's God's idea, uh, you know, the origins of it, uh, and uh, and the, the different facets of the church, right? everything, uh, and the huge part of it is about equipping believers, isn't it? Uh, it's about us going into all the world, uh, you know, making disciples, baptizing them, bringing them into the kingdom of God. And all of that uh, needs being equipped, uh, needs the saints to be equipped. And as it says in Ephesians 4 11, it's the 13. Uh, once again, we've read this uh, verse uh, multiple times in this course. Uh, it says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, and some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the, minist for the work of ministry. Right? for the equipping of the saints on all of the ministries that's there uh, every calling all of that he has given for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry right it's not just saints to be equipped and do nothing about it but they are all equipped to do the work of uh, ministry right um, just like how all of you are you're not just here to equip yourself with all these uh, topics and subjects uh, and then just go back home and sit and do nothing about it, right? Um, I hope so. <laughs> uh, most of you are here, uh, you know, to be equipped for the work of ministry, isn't it? Uh, you, right? So for ed for the edifying of the body of Christ, as it says, verse thirteen, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ right and so um the theme of this entire chapter is equip equip your believers uh in 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 every area possible right uh we need to equip them to be a minister of god right so you are moving them from new believers uh to a disciple and to a minister right and that's what it is. so the first thing it talks about equip every believer to be a minister so we need to see every believer as a future minister of god uh by minister we do not mean that they have to quit their jobs and to become full-time preachers no uh, that's that's not what it is isn't it uh as soon as we say ministry, uh, we only think about full-time ministry. Uh, I, I, I don't really know where the words came from, right? Full-time ministry, because uh, uh, at least I was taught that okay, you're in ministry all the time. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter where you are. Um, but that's, that's the idea is that we equip them to be uh, ministers even in the marketplace, right? So we'll talk a, let's just a little bit more about that. Uh, 
as we go on. And so we must continually emphasize that every believer is a minister. Uh, and we must encourage everyone to serve. We must lay aside our own personal insecurities and obey God's word. Okay, uh, you see that line there is very crucial. Uh, we must lay aside our own personal insecurities and obey God's word. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but uh, normal people will have these insecurities <clears throat> where, uh, you know, if you're a leader, and you see a potential leader in you know there's potential in another individual and if you have this insecurity thinking okay hey what if i give this uh responsibility to this person or what if i give this opportunity to this person and if they do better than me and because of that i'm not going to give that opportunity or responsibility to that person because of your insecurity thinking that the other person might do better than you that's one of the examples right i hope you you know you're with me um but we got the god's word says hey you keep all that aside right we lay aside our personal insecurities and you obey you, you're being obedient and you equip you continue to equip uh since and develop leaders that's another thing as well right so uh because simply because you acknowledge as a leader you uh, you can see the big picture as a leaders we have this gift um is to see the bigger picture of another person's life right? and so you notice and you recognize that they are they are gifted in a particular role uh, and so as a pastor as a leader it is your responsibility to guide them uh, and to, you know for, to help them discover uh, you know the role of whichever area that they are gifted in. Like some of them might uh, know what the their area of ministry, like the, the the area that they want to serve that they are gifted in, right? Uh, and then there are those who don't know uh, what they are gifted in, and they might be like, okay, I don't know what to do, I don't know how where I'm gifted at and whatnot. And as a pastor, as a leader, ministry leader, uh, the best uh, word of encouragement or the way you can encourage them is to, uh, you know, encourage them to start serving. Right? In which there are a lot of teams that can be available that they can serve in, right? And as they are exploring different teams to serve in, they might pick an interest towards a one particular team as like, okay, hey, you know, I am. Uh, I, I, I feels like I, I can um, I'm kind and I'm I can speak with people uh, and inter I love interacting with people and so maybe I need to join the member care team or the first time visitors team and just welcome the welcome lounge the welcome team etc right so this is a, a journey okay so this is another way of how you equip your congregation is you encourage them that hey they are all ministers, and they can be ministers wherever God has placed them. And in God's house, you know, you help them identify the gift that God has given them by allowing them to serve in your congregation. You kind of encourage them. I don't want to use the word push; it's, it sounds very really pushy. <laughs> uh, but but you kind of uh, you know push them to serve uh, in a church. Uh, you know, roll the cables or arrange the chairs or whatnot, right? So. Um, because the reason being some people are a little fearful as well they are hesitant they are they are um what do you say introverts right uh you heard of such people right extroverts and introverts introverts are those people where they will start running outside the church as soon as the pastor starts saying the benediction because <laughs> uh right if uh especially the way if the doors the way the doors are used to be placed in um the building that we used to meet right? there are four two doors on each side left and the right and so you know as a as a part of the worship team you're on stage um you can see all these things okay so pastor starts uh, giving the benediction or he hasn't even started the benediction you will start seeing people walking out you know most of the times uh because they don't want to uh uh, that's their nature introverts you know uh, they don't want they some of them have social anxiety and they just want to escape 
um, that place. But um, and you got to be patient with people like that, you know, because this is a journey. So you help believers um, discover their gifts, uh, a place and a function by walking with them and whatnot, right? Uh, in addition to that, right? So they're all gifted. Um, you know, you encourage them to be ministers. Uh, some of them may be called for full-time ministry uh, and some of them maybe not you can it, it doesn't matter isn't it uh, because uh, in the marketplace there's this thing right uh, there are seven spheres of the society uh, you know that make that makes a society right that is one is a religion education what's that religion education government family uh, business media and arts and entertainment Right, so these are the seven fears that make a society, right? And you, and you need individuals to be in all of these spheres, to uh, to have to you know to uh, to establish God's kingdom in all of these areas, isn't it? Um, it I I'm, I'm sure you would have heard about all these things. So, uh, in addition to that, in addition to help them helping them identify their gifts, if they already know, that's great where they want to serve. Uh, another way to equip them is you help them identify their life assignment. And what do I mean by that? Every single person has a destiny, a God-given purpose. Right? Uh, their gift alone is not their purpose. There's a huge difference, isn't it? Their gifts alone is not their purpose. Right? So God has a plan and a purpose for each and every individual. Right, uh, he designed us for this very specific purpose. Right, um, Isaac, I see you raised your hand. Go ahead. Isaac, uh, do you have a question? No, Pastor, it's by mistake. Okay, all right. So as I was saying, so every individual has a specific God-given uh, purpose, right? And our goal as pastors and leaders is to equip God's people so that they discover and fulfill God's purpose for their lives. Right? And how you go about hearing them, uh, 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 equipping them, is up, it all comes down to you. Um, it's, I mean, that's the responsibility that we have as leaders and as pastors, right? Uh, the responsibility on our shoulders are, are, are huge, right? And, and so with all of that, when, when, when we understand that every single individual is unique and have a God-given destiny and, and God has an assignment for that person, uh, you know, when we understand that, then we can, you know, take them through understanding how to discover God's life assignment for them, right? And how they need to prepare and step into that. Um, and so you can use so many resources as in uh, how to hear God's voice, uh, how to know his will for your life, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And also, I mean, if, if at all, if you have any individual, you know, who comes to you and asks, you know, because they look up to you as a pastor or as a leader and say, hey, uh, uh, how do I know what is God's will for my life or what is God's plan or life's assi God's assignment for my life? Um, I mean, if you have an answer, I mean, God's given you a clear vision, great. Uh, but most of the times, in my case, at least, I have zero idea, right? I'm like, uh, you know, it's sure you can tell them to seek God and pray, you know, pray and spend time and fast and pray and hear his voice and whatnot. And all of that is true uh, and, and absolutely great. And then one of the things that I have learned in from at least from my life is that uh, you don't stop serving. Uh, most of the times, most of the times, uh, God's plans or life's assignment, God's life assignment for you uh, will be revealed uh, during the time of your, you know, of, of you serving a ministry or another person or wherever you are. I mean, not just, you know, ministry, like I mentioned, wherever you are faithful. So, uh, for example, David did not, uh, David, continue to serve his father Jesse you know uh, even the day when he became went from a shepherd boy to a giant killer that morning David was tending his father's sheep uh, and then Jesse calls him and says okay hey David uh, your brothers are in battle 
I want you to take this bread and cheese and go give it to them. What was David doing? He was just serving his father, right? And on that day, I'm sure David had no clue that he was going to be promoted from a shepherd boy to a giant killer. But all he did was he was serving, right? Um, and, and there are so many examples after examples like that in the Bible. Uh, Moses was, uh, you know, serving his father-in-law. He was tending his father-in-law's flock, uh, you know, Jethro. Uh, and then that's when he sees his burning bush. And he has that encounter, right? So, uh, and examples after example, guys. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Elijah, Elisha, Elisha was working in the fields. Uh, so, so, I mean, it can go on and on. So, uh, you encourage them to be faithful and to continue to serve where they are, and you never know when God's going to meet them, right? Um, so you help them discover their life assignment. Uh, you provide ministry opportunities uh, and start your ministries. Um, so if you, like, for example, at that point that says provide ministry opportunities and start new ministries, right? Uh, let's take an example. Um, say Isaac is... Uh, is he's very good with uh you know video editing and graphics and all it related stuff okay and your church uh i mean so if your church has uh you know the, that ministry that needs an individual to function in that team you welcome isaac and you add them to that it team who can help in you know video editing or stream uh, live streaming and etc and whatnot and if your church does not have a team uh like that so now you have an individual with that potential who has a knowledge of it information technology and who who is tech savvy and whatnot and you can ask okay can i um can isaac uh you know invest and impact um in a ministry like this so and then you ask you have a conversation with that individual and then you start a separate branch of ministry just so isaac can invest and have an impact in that area of ministry right so that is another way you are equipping the people uh of your congregation okay guys uh i mean the whole chapter is that you are thinking of ways how you can equip the people of uh, in your church that's the whole point right uh, and it's very important so you are not just letting the new believers be new being new believers Right when they when they are new believers, when they've just accepted the Lord, um, you know, you are just move and you're moving them to become disciples. You're teaching them to become disciples, and from disciples, you're equipping them to become ministers. Right. So progress and growth uh, is a huge topic of the subject, isn't it? Uh, how many times we've spoken about growth and and progress, um, and so your your congregation also needs to grow, not just in numbers. It, it's one of the signs, but spiritual growth as well. And this is how that happens, right? You create opportunities, you equip them, uh, you trust them, and you believe in them, right? You equip them to move in the supernatural. Uh, I mean, if you're a church that wants to move and believes in the supernatural, uh, healing and deliverance, walking in the prophetic, etc., uh, etc., et uh, or even say um, uh, evangelism through, uh, you know, Let's say street evangelism. You're being, you are being a witness, uh, by but you're, but you're walking in the supernatural, and you are praying for the sick, and they are, and and they are being healed, and then they ask like, hey, how did that happen? And then you say, you know, hey, I pray to Jesus. He is my God, and you you are being a witness and you, while you are also moving in the supernatural, right? And. And so that's not just going to happen. Your, your, the people of the congregation are not just going to wake up and just start moving like that. Okay, it's like, okay, today we're going to go do, you know, uh, you are leading them. You are setting an example. You are encouraging your congregation. You are equipping them. And you, so maybe you take a weekend a master class or a workshop on how to move in the prophetic or the supernatural. Okay, congregation, a church, we are going to do this. Uh, you know, we're going to learn about how to move in the prophetic. We are learning how to move in the prophetic so we can be a blessing to our community, society, or we can be a witness uh, you know, to people around us, wherever. It could be in the streets or it could be in your offices, in your colleges, in your schools, wherever. You are equipping your church to move in the supernatural so that they can be a witness. 
wherever God places them. Right? Are you, are you guys with me? Right, and that is in, that is in the same line with regards to providing leadership um, as well. So you you are guiding them, you are guarding. So uh, what? Okay, so what? Uh, here's a classic question, right? Uh, in your um, in your words, define leadership. Okay, so Bashish says influence. Okay. Leadership, influence, so okay, to lead and set a good example. Okay. Come on, come on, define leadership. All right, Lyndon, uh, Paul, Abu, Leah, Roslyn. Come on. Okay, planning and organizing. Okay. Okay, Enoch, what do you think? Okay. Right. So influence. Um, so, Bishish, so when you say influence, uh, what do you mean? Like, how are you viewing that word influence as? bossing okay All right so uh okay do you believe or do you agree that uh, there is uh you can be influenced positively or negatively as well right so there can be uh a good influence and a bad influence isn't it um it, that doesn't necessarily need any explanation but you get the point isn't it so leadership is yeah i mean it's a place of influence uh, it's you, you are giving people to serve, uh, giving opportunity for people to serve and whatnot. You are guiding them. Uh, you are you are guarding and governing them as well. You are giving them your counsel. Uh, you're leading by example, as uh, Zelatoli says. Um, but yeah, uh, leadership is is a place of influence. I mean, that's why there are like thousands of books on leadership, guys, <laughs> and um, so many number of conferences uh, on leadership isn't it um so yeah i mean john john maxwell has written i don't know how many books on leadership uh i just posted my i just posted my oh yeah okay thank you you know so leadership is the ability of, of an individual or a group of individuals to influence and guide followers yeah uh, this uh the most popular word in social media is uh, I'm a social media influencer, isn't it? That's like the happening term uh, nowadays, isn't it? I, I'm, a, I'm a YouTube influencer or an Insta influencer on Instagram. Uh, this simply means uh, uh, being a leader, isn't it? And so um, you, should, you need to ask yourself as a pastor or as a leader, what uh, are you being an influence? That's one. And uh, and I the second question is more important. Are you being a good influence or a bad influence? That's another thing, <laughs> isn't it? So um, so as uh, you got to provide leadership, uh, you know, and let go when necessary. And if you look at the, that paragraph in your notes at the bottom of uh, page one fifty three, um, there are recurring three recurring words. It says we need to know. 
we need to know we need to know time and time again right we need to know when to guide and when to step back right uh, leadership is not like you know suspicious is not bossing around or not just constantly micromanaging and uh, you know it's like uh, you need to know when to guide and you need to know when to step back and give them the space to you know uh, are you are you giving them that space or room for error or that space of freedom to, for them to make mistakes so that they can learn from that mistakes right you need to know when to guide them and when to give them that space to make mistakes uh, right and all of that we need to know when to govern and provide clear directives counsel in other words um right so all of the these are all the ways where you equip your congregation you are equipping the saints Okay, you are creating opportunities. You are providing opportunities. You are guiding them. You are uh, you are helping them figure out life as well in all of this, uh, right? And and it's a beautiful way to figure out life. Uh, I mean, when you can figure out life in church, it's it's the best way. It's, there's no better place than that, right? Uh, I hope you guys are with me. Um, so uh, let's just continue on uh, on the same topic uh, to the chapter twenty five and page one fifty four into nurturing and developing leaders right? nurturing and developing leaders um, so we all need to raise leaders uh, that's uh, again leaders and leadership is uh, the talk of the town it's been the talk of the century everybody wants to be a leader uh, you know nobody wants to be a follower you know and if everybody wants to be leaders uh, you know uh, who will they lead if everybody wants to be kings who will be soldiers isn't it <laughs> right uh everybody wants to be worship leaders then who want who will be backup vocalists who will be other musicians uh, right in 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 all of this wonder of talking about leaders and leadership and all these conferences and all these books it's very easy that uh, for us that we forget and neglect uh the importance of serving right uh and a good leader is born out of being a good follower right uh, joshua was an amazing leader because he learned to serve moses in the season right and so uh, a good leader is being built is being shaped in integrity and character in that season of following another great leader right and so some of the traits that you need to look for uh, as a leader as a ministry leader or as a pastor before uh, assigning someone into a leadership role some of the traits that's mentioned here let's go through them is personal life example okay uh, personal life example you need to ask yourself okay how is this person's uh, life testimony uh, you know is he is he one thing on the stage and the other thing off the stage uh, are people able to relate because he seems very different on stage uh, or he or she is like wow amazing so nice and lovely and wonderful but the complete opposite off stage rude and unkind and, and blah 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 so that's uh, right um so personal life example and spiritual and emotional maturity uh that word maturity in spiritual life uh is very key guys especially christians especially people those whom you are considering to be in ministry and especially whom the whom you are considering to be in as ministry leaders because and i've seen I, I think i've been in ministry for a decent amount of time for me to tell you all this that it is very easy for people to hide behind the mask of their gift right and who can be very manipulative Right? they can hide behind the mask of any gift like uh, prophetic or whatnot okay you know in front of everybody else yeah sure they can move in the gift of prof uh, the prophecy or gift of knowledge or whatever they have the gift but uh, anointing is one thing and character is another thing right uh, there's this old saying right uh, your anointing will take you up but it is your character that which will keep you up there okay I'm sure you've heard this. I'll say it again. But uh, your anointing will take you up, but it is your character that will keep you up there. Uh, you know, God anointed Saul. He elevated him. He promoted him. Uh, what was his downfall? Was his character, isn't it? Uh, disobedient, and you know. And so, uh, 
look for their spiritual and emotional maturity uh you know um and again you need to know as a leader you can't know everything right it's impossible when people hide behind the mask it's impossible for you to know everything right you don't know their thoughts you're you're not god you're we are not all knowing all powerful all sufficient uh you know ever present <laughs> god is and that's why we need you you pray right uh one of the classic example was from acts chapter 6 when we saw that when uh when the apostles wanted to uh, appoint people to serve they prayed and they looked for those who are filled with the spirit for what to serve food isn't it um so spiritual and emotional maturity uh, alignment uh with the vision of the church super crucial <laughs> Uh, the vision of the ministry whichever right i mean they can be exceptional leaders uh very good leaders uh you know very mature and whatnot but they might not be aligned to your vision it is possible that they can you know direct or lead be leading the group of people in a different direction where the ministry is not aligned uh that is dangerous and so see if uh, the person that you are appointing as a leader is aligned to your vision uh you know to the direction of, that the ministry wants to go in okay is that person responsible reliable uh all the usual traits that you would like to see in a in a leader is that person responsible is that person reliable that means uh does he does he or she uh, uh are they committed like uh do they keep up to their word right uh you know are they on time as an example <laughs> that's just the basic yeah, example are they on time uh do they finish uh, do they uh finish the responsibility or do the job that you give them uh, excellently right so responsible reliable excellence uh continuous growth no personal agenda okay uh this is kind of in line with the second point or the third point which is uh uh, spiritual and emotional maturity or even the third point which is alignment so some of them can use the platform or the opportunities to uh, that you are giving them and they will use that to accomplish their own hidden agenda so whatever that may be <laughs> um hey, do they have any personal agendas you need to discern that it's very very dangerous guys so you see even as we go through all these points it's, it's so crucial so tricky uh, to have the right people at the right time uh you know yeah a gift and calling uh calling good followers uh leaders are good followers we get to this point eventually right they can take instructions do the dirty job and go down to the lowest level when serving under other leaders because they know the value of support uh there is this book called uh armor bearers okay I think the I'm not yeah. Eddie Nance is the author. It's called uh, Armor Bearers. Uh, it, it it has three parts. Small book. Uh, if you're a leader, if you're a ministry leader, or if you're serving under another person, this is a must read book. Okay, you need to have it in your library okay there are three parts to it it's all about being an armor bearer uh, to the king it's taken from the inspiration of that you know um uh the armor bearer to the king from from first samuel right you need to uh read that it, it talks about the importance of being a good follower good serving uh, leaders okay um good nurturers uh, people who have a heart to nurture other leaders um, because eventually uh, a leader should raise up other leaders isn't it so these are all the character traits that uh, you'll be looking uh, in put in a potential leader before you appoint them as ministry leaders right right guys are, are you with me so far are you following okay yes pastor. awesome okay Right. Um, so the next stage is nurturing their growth. Uh, we've spoken about this in in the previous in the earlier chapters uh, again. What is nurturing and what is growth? Uh, but this is in context to uh, a, a leadership, right? Um, so there are various stages in how you nurture a leader. 
right? One is the preparation stage um, where you are investing in them. Right. Uh, there is a process in mentoring that I like uh, that I like to follow. Uh, right. So when you are mentoring a person, right, uh, there is a process. Um, as you're not, you don't want to be mentoring that person for life. So one th uh, first thing is, so let's say for example, I'm um, say I'm mentoring, um, say Isaac. Sorry, Isaac. I'm using you as an example too much today. <laughs> um, so you know, so you're my mentor. <laughs> So you're my mentee, I'm your mentor. Um, there are some things. Uh, so I do it. Let's say, for example, um, um, so we are in healing ministry and whatnot, right? So you, you are with me. Uh, so I do it. I do the ministry. You watch me do it. Okay. And then you do it with me. Right? And then I do it with you. And then you teach another person. And so that cycle kind of goes on, right? So it starts off with me setting as an example. So, you know, I'm doing it. The second thing is you're, you're not doing it immediately. You watch me do it. And the third step is you do it with me, right? And the fourth thing is now you do it. Uh, sorry, the fourth thing is we do it together. And the fifth step is you do it all by yourself. And now you kind of do this. This is the mentoring process, right? So if I'm mentoring another individual or whichever area uh, they want to be strengthened in, that's the cycle that I like to follow. It's kind of simple, for, easy for me to follow. OK, one more time. I'll just go through that. OK, um, so I do it. You watch me do it. Uh, and what was that? And you do it together. And then, uh, and then yeah, you do it. I think so. I, I lost track. I think there was a fifth one there somewhere. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, but that's the process. That's the preparation uh, stage, right? In 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 that process, you are emphasizing character. Uh, you are em you are emphasizing them to be responsible, to be for them to be reliable. What it takes to be a good leader, right? And then there's the initial stage, right? So when you think that that individual is ready, at the right time, you allow the individual to step into their leadership role. Okay, to step into their leadership role, and you provide needed guidance, training, equip, equipping, um, and so, and, and it's it is in this stage, like the initial stage, that uh, there may be times where you need to provide correction and realignment, uh, because uh, it is also in this stage where they can either make it or break it. Like they are over and through about everything. They want to bring a hundred changes on day one. Uh, they wanted a bunch of things yesterday. You know, so all of this uh, excitement is there, like adrenaline rush, and this is where you kind of teach them. It's like, hey, hey, just cool down, like, hold your horses, just calm down, um, right? So this is where you teach them to approach ministry as not a hundred meter dash, but a marathon. Right? It's very different. Okay, so uh, you guide them, you correct them, you realign them, and and there's a stage where they are settling in. Okay, so now they got the hang of it, uh, and you know they are, uh, you know they're getting familiar with the process, with the structure, with the system, with the method, and they are now okay, a little confident about leading, about their role, and so this is the stage where you, as their leader, you kind of take a step back, and then just watch what happens. Right, uh, you give them that space to make errors. You give them the freedom. Right? Uh, I don't believe in freedom with a leash. Okay, uh, so, so it's uh, you know you let them do their mistake, whatever it is. Like you know, you learn. That's how we learn, isn't it? So people, in my opinion, people function amazingly well when they give them freedom and you trust them. But you know you. They've earned your trust. It's not like, okay, you're just blindly trusting them. You, you go through the stages, right? In, there's a preparation preparation stage, initial stage. And you will learn a lot about an individual in those two stages. Because it is in the second stage where you are providing correction. And if that person takes correction well with the right attitude, with the right heart, okay, so you know that you can trust this person with a little bit with freedom. And you can give them that uh, space to make errors and mistakes and whatnot. 
right? Um, so that's the setting, settling in stage is the growth uh, stage um, where now, okay, student that this leader needs more leaders he's uh, equipping more leaders and growing his team so this so that's that's a basic cycle guys is growth stage maturity stage and the transition stage um so this is how you nurture and and grow the leadership team right and you uh, and you are creating opportunities for development uh, so what does that mean? Uh, one of the best ways to develop leaders is to create opportunities for them to be a leader, right? You create opportunities for them to be a leader. Uh, uh, and um, and youth ministry was, an, was a beautiful learning uh, time for me as a, as a youth pastor is, I mean, there are about 150 odd young people at APC. There used to be about 200, 150 people is quite a number. And uh, and then we have five locations in Bangalore, um, and which is spread out all over the city of Bangalore. Uh, it is impossible, right, uh, <laughs> for me to connect with every young people from every different churches. Uh, you know, it was and so for that, we had a core team, a team of fifteen people. Uh, you know. Four, four individuals from each location. The central team was a little bit more bigger because there are a lot more people. And so they were my face, they're my, they are my voice when I'm not there, when they reach out to the youths of their location. So I coordinate with them. And so when time comes to plan a youth camp, for example, you need a lot of, again, same teams, like you need a transportation team to plan and coordinate transportation. Okay, how are they coming? Where are they coming? Uh, you need the, the, a team that to coordinate food. Food is important for you to young people right? <laughs> in the camp. Uh, who's going to be serving? Who's going to coordinate with the, with the venue people uh, if the food is going to be ready on time? Uh, the games team the worship team the ushering team these and these are it's a perfect opportunity to give responsibility to young people and see how they do it right uh, and uh, and so you what what's happening there is you are creating opportunities for development and that is how you identify okay hey that individual was faithful he was made he or she was there every morning arranging chairs like ushering team it was always welcoming people individuals making sure uh, they were all moving and sitting in the front and not just being sitting at the back you know how young people love to sit at the back and don't necessarily like to come forward and so you you as a leader you are noticing all these small small things right that they are faithful they are responsible they are reliable and then you say okay i want that person in my core team Okay, so there's like a, you know, um, so, so what, what what has happened there is just you've created opportunities for development, and then, and you know, guys, uh, I'll tell you this: when when you trust people, and you allow them to be free and to make mistakes, and they will see that, they will see, okay, hey, this leader trusts me, he's given me complete freedom, and I want to do it well because I've been trusted with this and they will do amazing. Right? And so this is how you nurture and you grow uh, in, you know, leaders in your congregation, in your church. And, and this perfect example is uh, Paul and Timothy, right? Uh, and Paul was an exceptional leader for so many young, uh, you know, uh, emerging leaders, emerging voices, if I may say. Uh, but you can see, uh, you know, the, the, their cycle in first corinthians 16 10 at the bottom um, paul took timothy along and over time nurtured him into a fellow worker and one who could do work for the ministry the way paul did so what are some of the points there there was a special bond between paul paul had a heart for timothy he referred to timothy as his own son in faith a closeness and transparency Paul let Timothy travel with him and see his life closely. It's some. It, it's kind of very similar to what we discussed about the mentoring cycle, isn't it? <laughs> so, taught specific things, encouraged and corrected, clarified costs, esteemed him highly, ne uh, delegated responsibility, positive recommendation. I mean, it's... It's just there, guys, for us, you know. So Paul was doing it. Timothy was watching him do it. And then so both of them did it together. And then when the time came, 
Paul said, okay, Timothy, I think you can pastor your own church now. I trust you enough to go and pastor your church. Right? Um, and so that is a, an absolute beautiful cycle of how we can nurture and, um, you know, build uh, leaders. All right? Um, so we'll pause here. Right? We'll take a break and we'll come back and we'll uh, conclude with uh, whatever's remaining of this. All right? I'll see you all in 10.